Hi, welcome to the screencast from Progress Software. Today we're going to be looking at how to add a custom date filter column in Kendo UI Grid using the Telerik UI for ASP.NET and MVC wrapper. My name is Lohit. I work as the technical evangelist here in Progress. Here's the problem that we are trying to solve. We want to have a Kendo UI Grid with a date column being rendered. We need a filter on that particular date column but the filter option should show only from date and to date as the options for filtering. So this is a problem statement that we will try to solve today. If you want to follow along with this video, I highly recommend that you go download our UI for ASP.NET MVC product. It's available as a 30 day free trial. This is the product homepage here. If you go to www.telerik.com, click on the products, you will see UI for ASP.NET MVC. Once you're on that page, there is a try now button here, the big orange button here. Clicking on this try now will start the download and you will be able to evaluate the product for 30 days. I hope you'll go ahead and then download the product. To start with, I have my Visual Studio 2015 Enterprise here. I'm gonna click on File, New Project. If you have installed Telerik UI for ASP.NET MVC project on your machine, you should see a node by the name of Telerik here. And if you expand Telerik, you will see web node. And I'm going to click on the web node here. And then we have a different project templates coming up here. One of them being Telerik C Sharp ASP.NET MVC application. This is what we need. So I'm going to give it a name here, Kendo UI Grid Custom Date Filter, Date Column Filter. I'm going to say OK. Now this is the project configuration wizard. It knows that I've already installed the UI for ASP.NET MVC version 2016.2. That means I'm on the R2 version of our Kendo UI. So I'm going to select project type to be standard. Then the ASP.NET MVC version is 5. The view engine is Razor. The theme, I'm going to select Blue Opal and I'm going to uncheck this add test project for now and then I'm going to click on finish. Now Visual Studio is going to go ahead and then start creating my project. I'm going to speed up the recording and then we're going to come back when the Visual Studio has finished the project creation. We see that the Visual Studio has finished completing the project creation and this is how our solution explorer looks like. This is as same as the vanilla ASP.NET MVC project. We have the same app start, controllers, models, views, extra things that have been added is we now have a reference to kendo.mvc.dll. That's the DLL responsible for providing Kendo UI ASP.NET MVC wrappers. And in the content folder, we'll now see Kendo and then the version number and then all the JavaScript, the style sheets coming up here. And in the scripts folder, we have the JavaScript. And let's run and then see how the output of this particular project is. I've clicked on run and my browser should open up now. There we go, we have our, my browser opening up and we should we're now going to localhost colon the port number and then here's the home page so now what you're seeing here is this is what's been scaffolded when you selected telric ui for ASP.NET mvc web application we have a home we have the about and in the about these are the kendo ui tree view here then if you go to contact so here is a kendo ui tab strip and in the home page we have the kendo ui panel bar so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove everything that's there in the home view and I'm going to start adding the Kendo UI grid uh, using the wrappers and then we'll finish the problem statement. I'm back in my Visual Studio. Here's the views folder, the home and then index.chhtml. As you can see here, there's already a bunch of content available here. I'm going to remove everything and then this is where we will add the Kendo UI grid using the wrapper. Instead of creating a brand new web API or an MVC endpoint in order to serve the data for the grid, what I will be using is I'll be using a Northwind uh, service that's available as a OData. 
and this has been hosted at odata.org in this website odata.org if you go to the reference services we have a Vodata v4 version or the version 4 of Northwind read only so I'm going to be using this northwind.svc uh, specifically I'll be looking at orders uh, table and here I'll be getting basically the uh, you know this particular JSON that I have so what we will be doing is we'll be using this orders table and then um, get use this as the data source for the grid and we will be showcasing all these order details and we will have a filter column applied to the orders or order date um, you know property so I'm going to copy this let me go get back to my visual studio so here in order to start working with the uh, kendo ui grid all you do is html dot kendo dot grid and of course our grid will need a type to be provided so what we will do is in a minute uh, we'll create a model so I'm gonna call this as k orders grid and that's all you need to um, add a kind of your grid but here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that you know it's uh, tightly bound to our tights uh, uh, you know it's type that it's working on the grid it's that's working on is called as order so I'm gonna go to models and I will say add new class and I will say this is order and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make use of Visual Studio's uh, feature of paste special and here there's a paste special paste JSON as classes okay let me copy this again and let's try this again now edit paste special and there we go so what it has done is it has created a root object but I'm gonna rename this as order and as you can see here it has everything you know it has brought uh, all the things I need so it has figured out that order date is actually a date time so I have the date time so what namespace are we in we are in this particular namespace so I'm gonna go to index.cshtml and then I will say using uh, this so now my order will be uh, lighted up so now if I just run this we are we're not gonna see anything so what we will need to do is we'll need to set the data source here so we will say data source and uh, we will have to provide data source dot custom uh, then dot transport then we need to set the transport related things here now and I will say transport dot read so I will have to set the read related things and what I'm gonna do is read dot URL so I know what URL I need so that's this is this is the URL and before that we need to say that this data source is actually uh, a specific data type that's odata v4 so that lets kendo UI data source know how to communicate with this particular um, service so now I've set the transport set the uh, URL all those things so other thing that I need to do is I need to say data source dot so I'm gonna say page size 10 and I will also say server paging is true because I don't want to do the paging on the client side since this is a OData you know uh, the server will do everything so I will also turn on the server filtering true for now now uh, other things that's left out is to let the grid know that it is pageable then I need to let the grid know that it is sortable then I need to set up the columns here so because uh, I don't want everything to be uh, shown so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say columns and then I will say columns dot bound column uh, what do I need I need the order ID first then I'm gonna say title order 
then I need I think we have a customer so I will say customer here then we need to know ship city so I will just say city then we need to know the ship country so I'm gonna say uh, country uh, that's all I need to know and then I will say dot um, order date so I will say ordered then they also have a required date so when do they require the shipment so I will say required date so I will say require and then there's a ship date so I will say shipped and I also want to know who was the shipper uh, that we ship this through so I will say ship name and I will call this as shipper so all we have done is we created the grid we said that grid is tightly bound to this order model uh, then we have set the data source in the data source we said this is a custom data source the type of this is Vodata v4 created the transport and then we said whenever uh, you need to read data go over to this particular URL so I think this is HTTP yeah so HTTP services Vodata dot arch v4 northwind northwind svc slash orders then I have set the page size I've set the server paging I've set the server filtering of course, the, we have to make the grid pageable, sortable, and then these are the columns that I need on the grid itself. So this uh, is what will create a grid for us. So let's run this and uh, see the output in a browser. So here is my browser coming up and it's navigating to localhost colon the port number and then we should see the page in, a, in any second. And there we go. So as we have set up everything, so what it is happening is it's getting me the order, customer, shipper, city, country, order, required, shipped. And also we have the paging so neatly done. Notice here it's doing the uh, loading. That's because nothing is loaded uh, on the client side. For everything it goes to the server. So now what I want is I want to uh, filter the ordered column and also notice here that uh, we, we we seeing the complete date time being rendered. So what we'll do is first we'll turn on the filter. So it's just saying filter rubble. And then in the ordered what I'm going to do is I'm going to say format. And the syntax of the format is double quotes, brace open, zero, colon. We can do like, you know, MMDD, YYY. And we will do the formatting for even the required and shipped. So let me save this and then come back to the web page. Now if I refresh, we should see that the date columns are all neatly um, what you call formatted so as you can see here July 4th 1996 they recorded on August we shipped it on July 16th but we have a problem the filterable it makes every column filterable right so let's first get rid of uh, all the column being filterable filters uh, so I will say filterable is equal to false for all the columns except order date so here is what it is so I need the filter for order date and then I will uh, remove the filters for required and ship date so now let me come back here and then I'm gonna do a refresh and now we see what we need that is only order date is being filtered but let me click on the filter options well this is not what we're looking for as you can see here the options available for filter is whatever the Kendo UI provides out of the box uh, is equal to is not equal to is after or equal to is after is before you know all the typical options that you can work out on a uh, date column or a date time columns this is not what I want I want uh, from date and then to date to be shown for that to happen the from date is nothing but is after or equal to and then the to date is nothing but is before or equal to so that is what we need to customize so what I'm going to do is in the filterable, we will need to set the filterable to what we need. And that is filterable dot operators. And then I will say operators. So operators dot for date. So I need to customize the options for date so I will say options 
So in the options, what we can do is we can first say clear everything. Then we can say options dot is greater than or equal to. Well, I want the is greater than or equal to, but I want to name it as from date. Then we have is less than or equal to. So this should be renamed as to date. So there we go. So with this, what happens is we have customized uh, the operator for the date time operation only. So that means in our grid, we have the order date and then we have a filter on the order date. Now, when I, when I refresh the page, you will see that we will see only two uh, options coming up. That's from date to to date. So I'm going to come back to my web page, refresh it. And if you see the order date now, there we go. So we have from date and to date. So let's try to check this out. So we have data from 1996 July. So I'm going to go back all the way to 1996 and July looks like let's pick up July 1st. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say to date and I will say show me everything from July till August. So it's like uh, 1st of July till 1st of August, filter it. So there we go. So we have only 24 items coming back. That's because there are 24 uh, orders from July 1st till August 1st. There we go. So this is how you can customize uh, any filter columns that you're looking for. So this was a, a requirement one of our customers sent in asking for if we can do this. And uh, I wanted to showcase how this can be done in the uh, ASP.NET MVC wrapper way. This is as easy as it can get. You just set the data source, you just set the columns, and then you just uh, customize the filterable. This was a short screencast from Progress Software. Thank you very much for watching the screencast.